a prophetic word this morning that tomorrow is a new beginning, a new day, a new season. Then God also spoke that He's going to do something fast. Hallelujah. He's going to do something fast. There are prophecies in your life which you are waiting for it to come to pass and God is going to do this in this season in your life. But let us go back to God's word and let us see from God's word what God wants us to do today to receive what he has for us tomorrow. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you are excited? Amen. Amen. God's word has the power to change us. Amen? But the condition is, if we allow. You know, sometimes people take everything and they dump it on God. God's word is all powerful. Nothing is happening in my life. If we allow that word to work in our lives, it will surely bear fruit. Amen? And I tell you something, you are living in a very prophetic time. In a time where God wants to do wonders in your own life. Not in someone else's life. First, God is wanting to do something in your life and my life. Hallelujah. Our God is a personal God. Our God is an individual God. And that is why He wants to speak to you and me. That is why He spoke to Moses alone. He spoke to Abraham alone. He spoke to Gideon alone. He spoke to Daniel alone. He spoke to Joseph alone. He caught Saul and He spoke to him alone. Are you ever labeled? For God to speak to you alone. Or are you hiding under somebody's shadow? Are you hiding under someone? Are you trying to just evade and avoid God? I tell you something. You cannot evade and avoid God because you've been marked. You've been marked. You have been marked. I prophetically declare over you, you have been marked by God. And God is not finished with you. In fact, He has just begun with you. He is not finished with you. Every good work that He has kept in store shall be your portion. But you want that work to be quickened. So we're going to obey God's word for, that, for His work to be quickened in our life. What do we need to do? Today, for God to do something new, tomorrow. The title of my message this morning is The Answer to This. Consecrate yourselves today. Consecrate yourselves today. I tell you, we are into very serious business. You have not come into God's house to run away at 11.30. You have come here to be transformed. You have come here to first give Him all the glory, the honor and praise. You have not come here bringing all your problems and going to think about it. And say, is there a prophetic word? Is this man of God going to pick out, pick me up from the crowd and say, this is what God has for you, this is what God has for you. Before God can do anything, He wants us to obey what He wants us to do. We can never come to God on our terms and conditions. We can only come to God to receive from Him at His word, as at His terms and at, at His conditions in obedience. So what are we going to learn today from God's word? How can we Consecrate ourselves today to the Lord. There is power and great power in believing unlike any other power in the universe. Do you believe that? There's great power in believing. Amen? There is great power in believing what God speaks. Amen? When we believe what God speaks, He makes it to come to pass in our lives. Amen? Amen? Now what does this power to believe have the power to do? It has the potential to change the natural into the supernatural. Hallelujah. Amen. 
it has the power to change the natural into supernatural it has the power to change the ordinary into the extraordinary hallelujah you see believing can change things in your life amen why because believing first changes you and me amen. hallelujah you know if there's any change required today that change is required within us and this is a word for spouses they are waiting for their spouse to change i have a prophetic word for you and this prophetic word will never change your spouse will change when you change that's it i don't have anything more that's what the holy spirit is saying your spouse will change when you will change you've been looking to your spouse for change and you have not been seeing change because you have not changed If your spouse changes it means you have changed. Amen. That's it. You laugh at it. You you feel it's a joke. It will become a joke in your life. You know if you take what God speaks as a joke you will get a certificate of a joker. Because everyone will count you as a joker. Everything in your life will be be a joke. But if you take God's word seriously Amen. then you will bear the fruit of that seriousness that you have taken the seriousness of his word will bring transformation ordinary will become extraordinary natural will become supernatural and you will not speak supernatural you will live in the supernatural hallelujah and that is why before god wants to bring the supernatural here before he wants to bring the extraordinary in our lives he wants us to live consecrated lives Amen. dedicated lives Amen. sanctified lives god is saying you're singing holy holy is the lord god almighty you know something that will never change holy 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 is the lord god almighty will never change what's our condition you know have we ever come to god and said Thank you God. I'm holy just as you are. I'm just moving there to be holy like you are. I'm just moving ahead. Or do you feel condemned? Do you feel unworthy? These are not from the Holy Spirit. This come from the devil. This come from the enemy. You're not worthy. You know some feel they're not worthy to lift their hands to worship. They're not worthy worthy to kneel down. they're not worthy to lift their voices this is the work of the enemy you've been listening to the whispers of the devil too much and god is saying this is a consecration service amen people wait good friday i will consecrate 31st night if they call for 5 10 minutes we'll kneel down and consecrate if it's easter sunday we have time we'll consecrate and if another festival comes around somewhere we'll consecrate god doesn't want us to consecrate ourselves you know now and then he wants us to live a consecrated life Hallelujah every day a day of consecration so that when we consecrate ourselves to him and we walk in that consecration we can see the new things of god tomorrow mark chapter 9 and verse 23 jesus said unto him If thou believe all things are possible to them that believe all things are possible to him Amen. that believes Amen. this morning i also want to talk to you about the power of believing how many of you i want to see this morning how many of you remember prophetic words over your life just keep your hand up even one prophetic word even one i'm not talking about the dozens you know some people just want prophetic words i met a lady a couple of years ago 3 years ago she says i like to go to churches where they have only prophecy I said what i go five services a day i pick out churches wherever they only prophesy she never mentioned any prophetic word coming true in her life you know at this rate i don't know whether she remembers any prophetic what was the last spoken 
But do you remember a prophetic word? I tell you something. Some of you this morning, that prophetic word has not come to pass. It has not come to, I'm not discouraging you saying that it will not come to pass. I'm saying there is power in believing. There is power in believing. From the time you receive the prophetic word till it comes to pass, God is working on you and me. I want you to get this right. I didn't say God is working in you and me. I said God is working on you and me. Hallelujah. God is working on you and me. He's bringing us a little down. He's pushing us a little this side. He's shaping us. He's cutting us. He's molding us. He's making us. He's shaping us. Hallelujah. Till that prophetic word comes to pass. So now you got it. It's as simple as this. The quicker you obey, the quicker you learn, the quicker the prophetic word will come to pass. Now, I, I want to ask you a question. Anyone has that prophetic word? God said it's going to come, uh, it's come, going to, come to pass after 25 years? No. That prophetic word will come to pass as quick as you obey. And you will walk in obedience simply only by belief. Amen. You hold on to that. You say, I've heard from God. And I'm not going to allow the enemy to come and Say those whispers in my ears again. Because I have consecrated my life. My life is dedicated for his glory. My mouth shall not speak unclean things. I shall not utter a word that grieves the spirit of God. My mouth shall not be open to curse. But my mouth shall be open to bless. My mouth shall not be open to judge, but my mouth shall be open to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My mouth shall not be open to condemn, but my mouth shall be open to forgive. Hallelujah. And when we walk in that, God does a quick walk because he sees our life consecrated. You know what God is telling the church this morning? All that matters is righteous living. Righteous living, right standing with God and with one another. You know, can we look into the eye of everyone? Everyone, eye to eye. And you don't say, I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you. I'm not telling you to literally get up and do this right now. I'm saying, ask yourself this question. Can you do that? If you are told to do, can you do that truly? Sometimes it's very difficult. Because people have gone through hurts. One does not like the other, but have gone through experiences that are not good. And so it becomes so difficult. Some say, I don't want to be a hypocrite, but I cannot get along. But God is saying this morning, he wants us to live consecrated lives to him and dedicated to love and serve one another. Hallelujah. That's what the church is all about. You know, protection comes in the house of God. How? With fellowship with God and fellowship with one another. You see, people say, there's protection in God's house. I mean, this is not a bomb-proof place. What are you talking about that protection? I'm talking about protection comes by right fellowship with God and with one another. Then no weapon forged by the enemy shall ever prosper. People can say whatever they want to say, but it's not going to come to you. You know why? Because it's going to go back to them. <laughs> you know, when you're walking covered under the protection of God and you're standing right with God and in love relationship with one another, then the one who curses is actually not cursing you. They're cursing themselves. Because the curse will go back to them. And so this morning, God wants us to live consecrated lives. It begins by believing. Amen. Believing in the one who has called us. Who has called you? Do you know who has called you? Jesus has called you and me. Hallelujah. And he who has called us is faithful. We don't need to be afraid when we know who has called us. Because the one who has called us lives inside of us. And he wants our lives to be consecrated to him totally. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Believe 
in what God can do tomorrow. Amen? You better believe in what God can do tomorrow. If you begin in obedience today. Today is a day of consecration. Today, even before you and I can partake of the bread and the cup, we're going to consecrate our lives to the Lord. Look at what God told His people in the Old Testament. Let's go there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The Bible tells us the story of His children coming out of His children of Israel coming out of Jordan River. For the second time. And for the first time, they came. What did they miss? They missed not looking at what tomorrow had in store for them. Because God had done amazing things. The Red Sea was an amazing miracle. The parting of the Jordan was an amazing miracle. Question to you this morning. When miracles have happened in your life, have you seen tomorrow? You need to see tomorrow. When those miracles, God has done extraordinary things in your life. You need to see tomorrow because it is God who holds your tomorrow. He holds you and me in his hand. Oh, no enemy can come. No demon from hell can come and pluck us away from him. All his plans are good. They will come to pass. Hallelujah. But what happened? These dear ones, they forgot. They did not know what tomorrow had in store for them. Because they did not know who held their tomorrow. Our tomorrow is in God's hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Our future is in God's hand. Some of them failed to enter into the promised land. Now look at what Joshua declared. As they stood at the banks of the river Jordan. In Joshua chapter 3 and verse 5. And that's our key scripture this morning. I want you to turn with me to Joshua chapter 3 and verse 5. Joshua told the people. Consecrate yourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Hallelujah. Consecrate yourselves today so that God will do amazing things tomorrow. People do not want to consecrate themselves. They don't want to give up some things which they are holding so dearly in their life. I'm not talking about your walk with God that you need to give up. I'm talking about habits. I'm talking about behaviors. They don't want to give up. And how can God do something tomorrow? You know what happens this morning? The word of prophecy said, you're sitting on the cutting edge. That cutting edge will cut and expose things so that you will respond. But if you don't respond, that same cutting edge can cut and destroy you. That was a word of caution, a word of warning. This is a prophetic word of warning to you. That if you do not respond to what God exposes through his word, then that same cutting edge of the sword will destroy you or devour you. God's plan is for none to be destroyed. There is good news. If we walk in consecration, God will do amazing things. Why? Because he'll go ahead to make the way. You know, some of you this morning have been struggling in life to make the way. This is what the Holy Spirit is telling me. You've been struggling in your life to make ends meet. You've been struggling in your life to make a way where there is no way. You know, you've not, you're not seeing any way. You cannot see tomorrow. All that you see is the same thing again and again. And God is saying this morning, this is a prophetic word. Consecrate yourself. Dedicate your life to the Lord. Get those things which are not right away from your life and align yourself with God and His Word so that times of refreshing will come in your life. So that you will see His hand and His power and His anointing upon your life tomorrow. You will see the supernatural work in your life because you've been trying to make a way, but there is no way. When God comes in, He will make the way. 
God will only come if we have clean hands and pure heart. Hallelujah. God works in the lives of those who have clean hands and pure heart so that as they walk, just like he has called us to walk, then he will do new things. You know now, this thing is not something that God just wants to do something tomorrow. But I have a revelation for you this morning. As you live, walk and live a consecrated life every day, every day, tomorrow God will do new things. So you consecrate today, God will do. You consecrate again tomorrow, God, you, you reconsecrate, you walk in consecration day after tomorrow, God will do the day after that. And so your life will be a consecrated life, a dedicated life, a holy life, a pleasing life, where you will not walk and knock the door of sin. You will not sit with sinful people. You will not rise up with sinful people. You will not walk with sinful people. You will not sit with them. You will not associate with them. You will be away from them. Even if you're cornered, it does not matter because you have made a choice to live a consecrated life and God says when you do that you will see amazing things tomorrow every day in your life will be amazing you will see the supernatural take over you will not struggle you will not strive you will not be stressful but you will be joyful you will not be powerless but you will be powerful hallelujah you will not be the victim anymore you will be the victor hallelujah that's what consecration can bring and that is what God wants his church uh, to walk in the consecration he has called us hallelujah so what did Joshua say Joshua said consecrate yourself you know how truly it is said the mind is the battleground the mind is the battleground nobody hates anybody out of the blue it starts with the mind. They don't like that person, the looks of that person. They can't stand that person. They don't want to hear the voice. They, start, they keep thinking about it. They don't see that person again for 10 days, 15 days a month, but it's still working because they've allowed the enemy to play in their mind. The mind is the battleground. If this mind you believe that is within you is the mind of Christ Jesus, Whenever Satan comes knocking at the door of your mind with such unclean thoughts, you can declare upon yourself, this mind within me is the mind of Christ Jesus. Uh, this lustful thought shall not come. This angry thought shall not come. This resentment and hatred shall not come. This mind is filled with the things of Jesus Christ. The mind that is, it was in Jesus Christ. Now my mind is filled with that. And God will enable you and me to walk in victory. He'll enable us to walk in victory. So Joshua said, consecrate yourself today. What are the words that you speak? You cannot have bitter water and sweet water from the same source. You cannot have hallelujah, praise the Lord and foul language from the same mouth. That is only grieving the Holy Spirit. Consecrated lives is just waiting for God to move. Those lives that are yielded to God and say, God, you are able to move. You know why? Because God wants to open up and part the Jordan in your life. He wants to part the Jordan in your life so that you will walk on dry ground. You know, the Holy Spirit is showing me this morning, this prophetic service. He's showing me there are people seated here. You're standing on the banks of the river Jordan like a situation in your life. And every time you've been seeing the Jordan swell and rise up. You've been seeing the, you've been seeing the Jordan River flooded. Oh, it's a powerful current. Oh, I don't know how to cross over. I don't know what to do. I don't know my situation is not changing. And you see the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next week and the next week and the next month and the next year and things are going from bad to worse things are not changing some of you are tired of life tired of life you just want to give up life you're so frustrated why because you've not come to that point of consecration you know consecrated lives 
are the ones who speak the word of God in spite of their situation. You see, lives that are consecrated don't look at the situation, but you look at the one who is the king over the flood. He is the king over the flood. He is the king over the flood. I declare this morning, Jesus is the king over your flood. I cannot promise you there will be no floods, but I can promise you a king over the flood. Hallelujah. And his name is J-E-S-U-S, Jesus. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He will not abandon you. He will hold you by his righteous right hand. When they say it is finished, he says, no, it is not finished. Only when I say it is finished, it is finished. Because you've been living a consecrated life. You've been living a dedicated life. You've been living a holy life. You've been living a pleasing life. You've been living a righteous life. You've been living in the fear of God. God wants to open the Jordan for you. Amen. You want the Jordan open tomorrow? Today, consecrate yourself. What I'm going to say now is not in my notes. Some of you are standing at the banks of the Jordan. Your problem is not in believing. Oh my goodness. Your problem is not in believing. What are you speaking, Pastor? Problem is not in believing, then why am I not crossing the Jordan? Your problem is not about believing the Holy Spirit. Your problem, the Holy Spirit says your problem is unforgiveness. You are living in unforgiveness. You are not ready, willing to forgive your spouse. You have noted down all that your relatives have done. Your loved ones have done against you, your spouse has done against you and you made such a long list that the long list is nothing but the wrong list. The long list is the wrong list because that's not what, the, what God wants you to hold. You know something? I have news for you this morning. If you keep holding on to that long list, the Jordan will never part for you. And I have news for you this morning. I have news that will blow you away. The list that God had against you was longer than the list that you have against your spouse. He washed that list with his precious blood. And you've been purchased by his precious blood. You've been purged by his precious blood. You've been sanctified by him. You've been cleansed by him. He... He invested all glory inside you. He invested the Holy Spirit inside you so that you will not live a life of unforgiveness, but you will live a life of forgiveness. That is a true mark of a child of God, that he is quick and she is quick to forgive and to give that belongs to God. I tell you this morning, this is a prophetic service. Yet I know many will not even bother to buy a DVD. Many will not bother to write. 7th of June. Very good. Prophetic service we had. How was your service in church? Good. Our pastor was time and again saying that it's a prophetic service. What did he say? Hold on. Let me just call somebody else. God wants to do a new thing tomorrow. I tell you the truth. Everyone is waiting for tomorrow. Amen? God is waiting for today. God is waiting for now. If we respond now, we can see a tomorrow. If we respond now, we can see a tomorrow of what God has in store. So here is this word which God showed me. There are some of us standing at the Jordan. And you've been going away disappointed every evening. And coming next day and finding the Jordan still swollen. And there's something that you cannot, just cannot understand. You cannot comprehend this. You're not able to digest this. How is somebody else crossing the Jordan? I mean, what's wrong? I've been going every day. And the same Jordan is swollen for me. The same Jordan is full of current. The same Jordan is powerful. The same Jordan doesn't allow me. And here I'm hearing testimonies. Oh, that sister crossed the Jordan. Oh, this brother crossed the Jordan. Oh, that family crossed the Jordan. What's wrong? Consecration. Consecration. You don't want to give up that habit. 
You don't want to give up that habit. It could be lying. It could be stealing. It could be cheating. It could be gossiping. It could be slandering. You're not willing to give it up because you consider it to be part of your life. It's like, you know, oh, I'll have to chop my hand off and throw it away. I'll have to chop my feet and throw it away. Jesus said, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. What is causing you to live in sin? Greater glory, greater growth. Greater glory is not just come here and experience glory, but you take it and go. Amen. Greater growth is so that others will see and you will stop singing the song and they will start singing the song. How great is your God? Amen. There's no God. You know something? Because of the life of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abed, Abednego, Nebuchadnezzar started singing a song. <laughs> he said, there's no God. Oh, there's no God like their God. Amen. You know, and so I'm going to pass a law, a decree that whoever, whoever, whoever opposes their God or does not obey what they say, they shall be destroyed. You see, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, stop singing. Now the heathen man started singing. There's no God like your God. Simply because these four lived consecrated lives. People want to see glory, live in the glory, want miracles, want supernatural, want signs, wants wonders, wants miracles, and not willing to live consecrated life, dedicated life. Joshua spoke to them what was on the heart of God. Joshua did not give them a long sermon. He was there at the banks of the Jordan. He said, consecrate yourselves. Amen? Amen. Why? Because tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things. Hallelujah. You know something I tell you here. When you live a consecrated life, what you speak will come from God. Amen. And what comes from God and you speak, God will bring it to pass. You see, Joshua was not just a man who believed. He was a man of faith. He was a man who lived a consecrated life. And that is why he could say with all assurance and boldness and faith that God will do amazing things tomorrow. Hallelujah. And I tell you this morning, being a man of faith, that God will do amazing things in your life tomorrow. If you consecrate your life today, get right with God and one another today. Get, get right with God and one another. The last few words, one another right today. It needs to begin with the family. It needs to begin with the spouse. It needs to begin with the father and mother. It needs to begin with the parents and children. Get right, get right, get right. Jesus is coming soon. Live consecrated lives. Hallelujah. If you do not allow that word to, to, to cut you and expose things, and you walk in disobedience, that same sword can destroy you. Amen. Don't take this very lightly or lightly at all because God is in serious business. Joshua was excited about tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you excited about tomorrow? Hallelujah. I can see new things happen. You know, one of the things that myself and Nida see Families transform. <coughs> Families transform. Broken marriages repaired and restored. Breakthrough in finances. Financial breakthrough. You know, financial breakthrough is not only related to giving. It's not only related to giving. It's as equally related to forgiving. If we don't forgive what we bring, will not bear fruits in our life. We must, that is why. You know the part of consecration, the major part of consecration is getting right with God and one another. Amen. Pastor, what are, you, what are you preaching? Did somebody tell you there's disunity in the church? There's, did somebody tell you that people don't love each other? I'm not here to find out that. I'm here to tell you what the Spirit of God says. I'm not here to please any man. I'm here to please God. I'm not being appointed by man. I've been appointed by God. 
No man brought me here. God brought me here. Hallelujah. And you know, God is doing amazing things. There are, you, you will see changes in the service. You will see changes in the service. You will see, you will see, the, 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 you will see people delivered. You will see deliverance happening here. You will see deliverance happening. You will see instantaneous healing happening in this place. Instantaneous healing. You will see creative miracles happen. You will see creative miracles happen. And whoever comes here and calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Because God is about to do something new tomorrow. You will have so many testimonies and praise reports that there will not be time enough to hear that. You will see people sending mail and messages across what God has done in their life. When God does something, you dare don't be quiet. No. Hallelujah. You dare don't be quiet. Give God my glory. You know something I'm going to tell you this morning. If God has worked miracles in your life, then and if you don't give him the glory, then it means you have robbed him of his glory. How can you expect God to bless a robber or a stealer? My God deserves all the glory, the honor, and the praise. We need to be quick. As quick as our prayer requests come. As quick as your prayer request goes to hundreds of places. Sometimes you can spend so much on text messages, sending prayer requests, but not 18 fills on a phone call back again. Wow, God did amazing things. Better see what God has tomorrow. God has amazing things for you tomorrow. God has amazing things for your family. Because his visitation is going to transform your life. His visitation is going to bring a complete change. God is able to restore what the enemy has stolen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you consecrate your life and you say, God, I live a surrendered life to you. Not only just by words, but by actions, but by deeds, by my relationship with you and with one another. It shall be pleasing in your sight. And God will make the supernatural take over the natural. Hallelujah. God will do extraordinary things in your life. That he will, he, your life will not be ordinary. It will be extraordinary. You do something. When your life is extraordinary, it will catch the attention of others. Does ordinary things catch the attention of people? No. But extraordinary things surely catches the attention of others. Why? Consecrated lives brings the extraordinary presence of God in our midst. Oh, we will be different people. We will carry the glory and the radiance of God. Amen. On our face. Hallelujah. Our very presence uh, there in places will change situations. Amen. Hallelujah. No demon can stand uh, wherever we go. And what we declare. Amen. Over the city. Over the nation. Over your workplace. In your family. In your finances. In your health. Uh, in your relationship. Will come to pass. Before that can come to pass. Consecrated lives is what God is calling his people to. Hallelujah. So Joshua was waiting for tomorrow. You know why? Because he said God is going to do amazing things. You want to see the amazing things of tomorrow in your life. What happened when they consecrated themselves? The Lord surely did amazing things. Hallelujah. What happened? The Jordan stopped. At flowing at a full stage. Amen. You see, the supernatural came in and took control of the natural. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God wants to come and take control of every area of your life. Are you willing to give it to God? Are you willing to give it? It could be in your family. There's a mess up in your family. There's arguments and quarrels in your family. God wants you to show love. God wants you to invest love. God wants you to invest forgiveness. God doesn't want you to take the list and say, sign here. And you promise me to behave well. And if you behave well, then I will be good spouse. I will be the provider. I will be. No. God did not come to us based on our performance. Our performance was perfectly fit to take us to hell. We were super performers to go to hell. But God in his great love and mercy came. And that is why when we have received of that mercy and love, we should be ready to impart it. If it's not there, consecration is required. 
If mercy and love is not there, consecration is required. If forgiveness is not there, consecration is required. If dedication is not there, consecration is required. If you want to see God doing amazing things in your life tomorrow, today is the day and now is the time. Don't live lives that are double standard. No double standard lives. You know what? Sometimes people living double standard say, God blessed me with this, bless, bless. God even blessed the heathens. The Bible says the rain falls on them also. When God blesses us, the world will see. God's blessing is not some tiny drop that has fallen somewhere and evaporated. God's blessing is seen. God's blessing is experienced. God's blessing transforms. Abraham was blessed and it was seen. Hallelujah. God wants to bless you and me so that it will be seen. Consecrated lives will open the floodgates of heaven. Hallelujah. And God will pour out a blessing that we will never have room enough to contain it. God doesn't want to pour out a blessing that will last for one day. He wants to pour out blessings that will last for a lifetime. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Till we see him face to face. Woo! Somebody be excited. Oh, because God is at work. Whether you know it or you don't know it, God is at work. Your very, your very presence here shows that God is at work. There are people who left their house and did not reach their next destination. But you are here because God is at work. He has breathed in you his breath. And you are a living being. Hallelujah. You're not just a living being to be a living being, but you are a living being for His glory. You do not belong to yourself. You belong to God. You did not purchase yourself. He purchased you. You could not redeem yourself. He redeemed you. You could not pay the price. He paid the price. You did not know where to go, but He made a place for you and me. He is preparing a place for you and me. Hallelujah. And that is why He is calling us to get into this highway of holiness. Hallelujah. Isaiah 35 speaks about a highway of holiness. It is not talking about a walkway of holiness. Uh, it's not talking about a, a side street of holiness or a service road of holiness. It's called a highway of holiness. Hallelujah. You know something on the highway, everything moves fast. Hallelujah. Everything moves fast. Those who move slow can be knocked. We move fast. God is calling his people and taking them and putting them on the highway of holiness so that every you will not struggle. You know why the Holy Spirit is telling me people struggle? They struggle every day. They feel so good. They come on Friday and say, Holy Joe. Everything is so holy, so good. Hallelujah. The music was good. Everything was good. I was, I was drowned. I was drenched. What happens? When you reach the gate, does it dry? We need to still be drenched. You need to be drenched in the dew of heaven. You need to be drenched carrying the glory of heaven. You need to be drenched, carrying and releasing the power of God. Every day needs to be a power-packed day. A consecrated life produces a power-packed day. Joshua was a power-packed man. And he said, my God will do amazing things tomorrow. How many of you are in need of amazing things tomorrow? I put both my hands up. I'm in need of amazing things every day. Hallelujah. And so we need to consecrate ourselves this morning and say, Lord, I'm not going to do the things I used to do like before. Things that were grieving in your sight. Lord, I have seen, I've been like your people who came out across the Jordan once and I forgot. Short memory. Forgotten what the Lord has done. Some of you, some of you were headed to go out of this country many years ago. But God has still kept you here. Can I hear an amen? amen? Some of you didn't even realize that. I tell you the truth. I'm telling you what the Spirit of the Lord is telling me. Some of you were going to be out of this country years ago, but God kept you miraculously here. <coughs> Let us not forget His goodness. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within Him. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not, and forget not, and forget not. What happens when we forget? We need to repent. We need to ask forgiveness. 
You meet an earthly, a human being, they do so many things for you and you live as if they've never done anything. One day when you're in trouble, say, hello, mister, you forgot all that was done for you all these years. Ah, sorry, sorry, uncle, sorry, brother. But no sorry for Jesus. No sorry for God. You know why? Because God is taken for granted. Now, I'm, I'm somewhere in the corner. He'll do amazing things. I'll just stick to some corner and I'll take the amazing things. Huh. The word of caution and warning this morning said, you're not going to get the amazing things. You're going to get the sword. Boom, it is going to fall. You know, when the sword just cut, when it touches, it'll cut and open. When it falls, that's another story. It, you'll become history. God doesn't want us to become history. But he wants his story to be our portion. Hallelujah, that amazing grace, love, mercy. Are we willing to consecrate our lives this morning? Believe in what God can do tomorrow. Because what he's doing today, he's able to take you through your tomorrow. Consecrated sounds like a negative word. In the Hebrew, it is known as kadash. And it means... It simply means to be clean, to cleanse ourselves from anything that would hold us back to get ready for tomorrow. That is the meaning of consecration. Putting away everything that would try to hold us back from getting ready for tomorrow. What does tomorrow hold? What does tomorrow hold? Joshua said, yeah, come on, come on, come on, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up on a Friday morning. What is in store tomorrow? You're looking, you're looking, your face has an empty look, so you want tomorrow to be empty for you? You need amazing things. And Joshua said, the Lord is going to do amazing things tomorrow. I tell you, God is going to do amazing things tomorrow. Amen. Your pastor has a prophetic calling. Ask this man who's sitting here, this brother. Every prophetic word spoken about his life and family has come to pass. And many of you, I'm you're not here to vouch for my own self. I'm telling you, take what God has. Glory. Sir, what have you to lose? You're not going to become bald. You're not going to become poor. You're not going to become a pauper tomorrow. If you believe what God has said, you will receive. If you believe, you will see his glory. If you believe, you will receive it. You will receive the amazing things with the condition that you are ready to consecrate yourselves today. Hallelujah. What is the meaning of consecration? Yes. To make clean or to to put away anything that holds us from receiving or getting ready for what tomorrow has. Hallelujah. God wants to bring his people into a new day. How many of you are tired of some things in your life? You are tired of some things. It's just happening again and again and again. God wants to bring you into a new day. You're living in a season, at least in a month, where God is going to do a quick work. God is going to do a quick work. A response needs to be quick. His work will be super quick. Super quick. I'm going to hear of a lot of miracles. A lot of miracles. A lot of healings. A lot of deliverances. A lot. I can see a transfer of wealth taking place. A transfer of wealth taking place. The Bible says that the wealth of the heathens belong to us. Come on. Now you will hear the most noise in the church. Because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds of the mouth of God. You know, people's lives are revolving around money, 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 money. Everybody in the boss, the office in sales says, show me the money. You know, if you're in sales, show me the money. Don't show him the sales report, show me the money. When the money comes into the account, that's the real sales complete. Show me the money. And when money comes, everybody, wow, hallelujah. Before God can give the money, let me tell you something profound. Before God can give the money, he will check how we are handling what we have. If we are messing with what we have, we will not get money. 
if you're messing with what God has already given you, you will not get more because, by the way, our God is not a foolish God. He's an all-wise God. <coughs> he, will not, he will not invest or pour in what is full. If you want God to pour, you need to empty yourself. You need to give and it shall be given unto you. It doesn't, the Bible doesn't say it shall be given unto you, then you give. It says give and it shall be given unto you. Amen. As I close, I just want to tell you of an interesting story that happened in the book of 2 Kings in chapter 7. The city of Samaria was under a heavy siege by the enemy. There was no food in it. It was bad. The Bible calls it a great famine. And then in 2 Kings 6.25, as a result... There came a time when after a long while, even a donkey's head was sold at an expensive price and a pint of dove's dung was sold for a price. Wow, what a situation. What a situation. Have you heard of such a famine in your life? We have never been to such a famine in any of our lives. People were eating donkey's head and the dung of dove's. Look at what they had come to because they did not believe. They did not consecrate. They mixed themselves with others. If you're a believer and you say you enjoy with unbelievers more rather than believers, sir, something is pathetically wrong to you. Something is miserably wrong to you. Your faith is stinking. Your faith is stinking. You cannot have a ball of a time with, a, with an unbeliever. I'm not saying you don't meet them, you don't come across them. I'm saying you love to have more fellowship with unbelievers than believers. Sir, get right. The devil has not whispered but spoken aloud a long time. You need to have good fellowship with your brothers and sisters. Don't take undue advantage. Don't cheat one another. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Jesus said, I didn't say, I didn't say. Jesus said, everything else apart from that comes from hell. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. And everything apart from that comes from the devil, the father of all lies. We have nothing to do with the devil. We've been purchased by the blood of the lamb. Hallelujah. We are lived to call. We are called to live a life that is dedicated to him. Consecrated lives. Hallelujah. And so we see there's a time in 2 Kings 6.28. The king asks, what's the matter? Then the woman answered, he said to me, give up your son. We may eat him today and tomorrow we will eat your son. And the next verse, so we cooked my son and we ate him, and ate him. The next day I said to her, give up your son so that we may eat him. But she had hidden him from me. Look at the famine. They were eating their children. Lives that were mixed with the heathens. You know, when you're mixed with heathen, you compromise with heathens. You walk with them and live the way they live. You have opened every possible door to the enemy. Famine was so severe till the servant of God came. And Elisha said, the Lord said, tomorrow two gallons of flour and four gallons of barley grain will be sold in the market for as good as nothing. And the king said, how is it possible? How in such famine is it possible? If you believe, you will see it. If you believe at what you're looking with a natural, it is impossible. If you tap into the supernatural, it is possible. Because our God is the same God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, Isaac and Jacob. The God of Elijah, the God of Elisha, the God of Daniel, the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, the God of Isaiah and Jeremiah, oh, the God of Micah, the God of the apostles, hallelujah, the God of those he chose in the New Testament and your God and my God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to consecrate yourselves? Yes. Rise up. We thank you for your presence. We are standing on holy ground. And there are angels all around this place. The Holy Spirit is here. And you have heard every word. And we have heard every word. We come to you with a repentive heart. Forgive us, we pray. 
for every idle word spoken for bitterness and anger for jealousy and hatred for condemning for judging others for doing things that are displeasing in your sight lord we come to you surrendering our lives afresh forgive us for unbelief forgive us for forgetting the word that you spoke over us the prophetic word holy spirit we pray remind us the word that you had spoken so that we will write it down and we will keep declaring it as we live lives consecrated to you everything everything each and everything that stands in between you and us we surrender to you it could be bad habits it could be our tongue our eyes our hearing our desires what is not of you we pray thee please lord jesus take it away burn it burn it burn it under the fire that comes from heaven purge us purge us cleanse us sanctify us we will live a life that is holy and pleasing in your sight a life that will be blameless our walk and our talk will match in line with your word help us holy spirit to walk in this consecration all the days of our lives we forgive all those who have offended us who have spoken against us who have hurt us who have cheated us who have humiliated us who have put us down we forgive them without any condition and lord jesus we ask you to blot all our transgressions out from our life remember it not and we pray the prayer that your servant david prayed create in me a clean heart o god and renew a steadfast spirit within me cast me not away from thy presence o god and take not thy holy spirit away from me thank you father restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew a steadfast spirit within me lord jesus i will love you with all my heart with all my soul with all my strength and i will love my brothers and sisters i love my neighbors i love whoever you put in my path so that they will know your love through my life lord jesus i believe i believe in you and i believe all things are possible i am ready to receive the amazing thing that you have in store for me tomorrow for my life is now consecrated to you